Real Southern Woman. I am running a little bit late and we have an appointment this morning. I have an appointment at 11 o'clock in Brunswick, so I can't be on here too long. Um, and I just took my shower and got ready. I've been up since 630 working. But anyway, good morning. It's good to see everybody on a Thursday morning. Um, before I made my schedule for the new summer schedule, I actually made this appointment. And um, I called them and see to see if they could reschedule. And it was going to be so far out that I didn't want to reschedule. So anyway, I um, hope you are having a blessed day already. I haven't looked at the news or anything that's going on this morning. I've just been getting dressed. So um, I just want to say hello. Um, I have really not studied my Bible study this morning because I have been really busy um, getting dressed. So we're going to read it together today. And um, I'm not going to stay on here a really long time. So we're going to have to hop right into it. I hope that's okay with you guys. Um, let me open it up and I'm going to start reading from our study for today. It's um, Charles Spurgeon's Morning Reading for May the 26th, and it comes out of the book of Psalm, and it says, Cast thy burden upon the Lord, he shall sustain thee. Cast thy burden upon the Lord, he shall sustain thee. And I know that many of us are still grieving over what happened in Texas. I know I am. Every time I start to think about it, it just grieves my heart to think about what those poor teachers um, we're going through that we're actually next door um, to that classroom um, and the kids that were in their classrooms. I mean, the whole thing is just crazy, horrible, um, something that you would never want to think about. And I just pray that God somehow um, touches these people to help them get through what they're facing and the memories and the flashbacks and the dreams. I just can't imagine what they're going to be like. So um, if you are burdened about that, hopefully this will help you today. It says care, even though exercised upon legitimate options. I'm, I'm sorry, objects. Now, now, remember, I haven't edited this and changed the words to make it easier to understand. So we're just going to be reading it this morning. It says, care, even though exercised upon legitimate objects, if carried to excess, has in it the nature of sin. Okay. To precept, to avoid anxious care is earnestly inculcated. See, some of this stuff, I don't even know what it means. Let's see what that means. Y'all may have a better vocabulary than me. Um, it says, instilled an attitude, idea, or habit by persistent instruction. So it says the precept to avoid anxious care is earnestly, um, it's an idea by our Savior again and again. It is reiterated by the apostles and it is one which cannot be neglected without involving transgression. For every essence of anxious care is the imagining that we are wiser than God and thrusting ourselves into his place to do for him that which he has undertaken to do for us. I guess what it's trying to say is that sometimes um, we are burdened to the to the point that it's actually sin okay because we can't really do anything about it and just like what happened this week i know that's hard to, for us to think about how could we be so anxious that we would be sinning but um when it starts taking control over you and you can't seem to snap out of it then you're not trusting God with um, your burdens, okay? So I guess that's kind of what this is saying. It says, we attempt to think of that which we fancy he will forget. Um, we labor to take upon ourselves our weary burden as if we, as if he were unable or unwilling to take it for us. 
Uh, now, this disobedience to his plain precept, this unbelief in his word, this presumption in intruding upon his province is all sinful. And I know that's hard to wrap your head around, but God um, can take care of everything. And he does take care of everything. And so we have to get to a point in our life where we're really able to give it to him. And it, sometimes it's really hard. And the main thing I have noticed, like over the last few days, if I start to really think about what happened and I start imagining in my head what those people went through and what they had to see, um, it really almost makes you nauseated um, to the point that you get sick. And so we don't want to make ourselves sick uh, of course, we need to care about these people. And of course, if we're um, empathetic at all, if we have any feelings towards other people at all, we are going to be burdened. But once we get to that point, like what I'm talking about, to where you're nauseated, to where you're, um, you just can't fathom it and you just can't seem to escape it, it's time to get up and shake it off. OK, so you have to get up and tell yourself, Tammy, stop. Um, let God take care of this. Just pray that he'll help these people and don't. I guess you would say. Um, take it upon yourself like you can really do anything about it case you can't. OK, um, it says. He who cannot calmly leave his affairs in God's hand, but will carry his own burden, is very likely to be tempted to use wrong means to help himself. And this, of course, is not just talking about yesterday. This is also talking about problems that we have within our families, with our children, with our parents. Um, and so we have to be very careful. Because when we try to take the burden and help our kids, it's very unlikely that we could be tempted um to use the wrong means to try to help them um i notice when i get upset with my kids lots of times i say things i shouldn't say and you can't go back and take it back so you had to be really careful uh, because lots of times even if you want to help them they have to help themselves and the only way they can do that is if god lays it on their heart and the best thing for us to do is to pray that the holy spirit would help them see the light, you know, help them um, grow up and be responsible, etc., and um, understand that being a parent um, is also trusting in the Lord. And this is just my own situation, um, or being a mother, or being a child, or whatever it may be. You also have to trust in the Lord and not think you've got to take everything on yourself to fix a problem. Okay. Um, this lead, this sin leads to forsaking of God as our counselor and resorting instead to human wisdom. This is going to be the broken cistern instead of to the fountain, a sin which was laid against Israel of old. Anxiety makes us doubt God's loving kindness, and thus our love to him grows cold. And I can see that. I could see how that would happen. We feel mistrust and it grieves the spirit of God so that our prayers become hindered. Our co consistent example is marred and our life one of self-seeking. And you can see where that would come into play because we're selfish people. I mean, we're selfish. We want everything when we want it. We want it fixed. We want it done. And we want to carry our own burdens. And it's wrong to do that. Thus, want of confidence in God leads us to want, wander far from him. But if through simple faith in his promise, we cast each burden as it comes upon him and care for nothing, because he undertakes to care for us, it will keep us close to him and strengthen us against much temptation. Okay, so I guess what I'm trying to, what he's, this really applies even for what has happened in Texas because 
if we're not careful, we'll start saying why, what if, why, how in the world, etc., to where we get to the point we don't trust God. And not only do we not trust him, but we grow further from him and we get angry. Okay, we get angry. And so we have to be really careful, really careful. And we have to understand that no matter what, um, God will take care of everything because he loves us, because he cares for us. And so we need to make sure that we give this burden to him. Um, it says, thou or you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. And this, of course, is someone talking to God. So God will keep you in perfect peace if you keep his, if you keep your mind on him and trust in him. Okay. And so um, that is our Bible study for today. I hope you um, can gain something from it. I hope it helps you no matter what the burden is in your life right now. And I'm sure that many of us have burdens um, that we learn to cast them upon the Lord and not only cast them and say we're going to, but actually do it. Trust him, trust him with everything. And uh, let's not fall into this pattern that he's talking about where we try to take control and take care of our own burdens to the point where we make mistakes and make the wrong decisions and get ahead of God. And therefore, um, look back on it months from now and wish we would have trusted our Lord and Savior more. Okay. And that's pretty much it. Um, we, that was a very quick Bible study. Um, and we are headed to the doctor's office. We got to drive an hour to get there. And Chris is actually home today because the weather's not all that great for fishing. And he had all that dental work done again yesterday. Bless his heart. He had caps put in the day before yesterday. And yesterday he had like three fillings fixed. And when they were putting a mold in his mouth, uh, one of his old caps came off. When he got home, he said, I feel like I've been through the ringer. And I said, well, I bet you do. Um, but I just um, want you to know I love you. And I'm sorry I'm cutting you so short today. Maybe I'll make it up for you uh, over the weekend. And um, I'm going to make me a cup of coffee. And we're going to head out of here. We need to be there on and, and leave so we have plenty of time to get there so i just thank you so much for watching real southern woman i hope you really take this um lesson um and and put it to uh, work in your life today so that we can escape these ang these feelings of anxiety we're having from what happened this week i know that all of us are going through it and I, for one, can say I definitely am. Um, and so we really need to trust God. So we're going to go to the Lord in prayer. And um, let's go together in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for today. Um, we thank you for this Thursday. We thank you for every day you give us here on the earth, Lord. And we know that we are only here really so that um, we can spread your gospel and spread your good news and spread your love and light in this world. This world is not our home. Praise the Lord. We will be with you one day in glory in, in heaven with our wonderful Savior, Jesus Christ. And the God of the universe. I can't imagine how wonderful it's going to be. And so just help us, Lord, as we go through life. Um, and many of us have good lives here on the earth and we enjoy our life. And I would pray that each of us could learn how to do that through Jesus Christ, for he came to give us life and to give us life more abundantly. So may we um, learn, Lord, how to be happy, how to be content, how to um, go about each day spreading your love so that our life means more and we have more of a purpose and 
I just hope you help us do that. Now be with all of those in this world, Lord, that have no idea who Jesus Christ is, who have never heard the gospel, and even those who've heard it but rejected it because they choose to um, go by their own will and not follow in the path of the Lord. Um, so we pray for each of those souls because they are so um, empty and lost and I can't imagine what it must feel like when that is your position in times like these that we're in today. So we just pray for each one of those people. Um, bless all of the listeners and the viewers. Help us love each other. Help us encourage each other. Help us pray for each other. I just thank you so much for being a part of our life, for giving us the word of God so that we can um, have a life more abundant. In Jesus Christ's uh, name we pray. Amen. Y'all have a wonderful and blessed Thursday, and I will see you next time on Real Southern Woman. Um, if for some reason I don't get to see you over the weekend, then I will be here. I'm not real sure about Tuesday morning because we are going to be out of town, but it will probably be Wednesday. Maybe I'll do uh, um, an additional one, an additional an additional Bible study over the weekend, hopefully, uh, Lord willing, because we should be here. We'll see you next time. Love you. Bye.